Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, And today we're gonna to be reviewing one of the most crazy interesting 3D printers I have ever reviewed on this channel. And hands down the best printer I've ever used, period for quality of prints. Now that printer would be the Form 2 by Form Labs. Now if you guys are not familiar with Form Labs, I highly recommend that you go watch the Netflix documentary called Print the Legend. I'll have a link down in the video description, but it's amazing and it tells the tale of how Form Labs wanted to bring stereolithography or SLA printing to the desktop. And also, this is their second generation printer since creating that movie, and you can totally tell that they paid attention to all of the feedback, and they've got it just right. Now, the way that stereolithography printers work is completely different than how the conventional FDM style printers work that you're used to, like the MakerBots and the Ultimakers and all of those printers of the world. Those printers work by taking a plastic filament and melting it, and then depositing it on a surface and letting it basically cool down and solidify again. Well, the way that an SLA 3D printer works is it takes a vat of liquid resin and then shines a UV curing laser at it, which then solidifies the surface. Now, the huge advantages to SLA printing over FDM printing is the quality of the print because you're always curing each layer flat up against a surface so you don't have problems with drooping or filament running or all of the conventional things that FDM printers struggle with. You also get a part that is much more solid because you don't get air trapped between the layers like you commonly do with FDM printers. Now the elephant in the room of course is the cost of the 3D printer. Not only the printer at $3,500 but also the cost of material. Now the material comes in a cartridge just like this one I'm holding right here but the problem is for one of these cartridges they start at $150 and go all the way up to $450 depending on what kind of crazy material you want. Now don't let that scare you off because once you see the print quality of this thing, I think you'll agree that it's actually worth the cost if you're trying to print stuff in incredibly high detail that you then want to cast and replicate. Now look at this example. This here is Kratosocles. You can clearly see that he is translucent and there is no bubbles inside of the print. He has printed at 100% solid infill. And you can see every single little detail all the way down to the scar and stitches on his abs, even at this small scale. Getting this level of detail on an FDM printer would be impossible. Now, I've done most of my printing so far using the clear material because I absolutely love it for a couple of reasons. One, it cures incredibly fast, so your print time gets dramatically reduced, and you get to watch the laser light show going on inside of the printer while it's printing the part. Now, unfortunately, it's hard to time lapse this printer because FDM printers generally just keep moving up another layer, moving up another layer, moving up another layer, so it makes it very easy, but the SLA printer, because it's lifting the platform and then resubmerging it between each layer, the time lapse actually doesn't look very good. So it's better to just record these in real time. Now, I had a chance to use the Form 1, which was Form Lab's first printer when it came out, and it had a lot of problems with it. The biggest problem that I had with it was you had to handle a lot of material because you're basically opening up bottles and pouring it into a tank, and this material is really nasty. It has the viscosity of motor oil, and it wants to really hold onto your skin. You have to basically dissolve it with alcohol to get it off of your skin, which I don't like, so I don't want to have to touch the material. Now, they fixed that with the Form 2 because the Form 2 uses a cartridge system where you basically load this cartridge into the top of the printer and then you just take and load another tank, this is a tank right here, into the printer and everything is handled automatically. It will automatically keep the tank to the correct fill amount when you're printing so you don't have to pause your print and keep refilling material. And the other really cool thing about it is when you want to swap material, you literally just take the bin out of the printer or the tank rather and you put a top on it and you put it in a safe spot along with the cartridge to store it so that you don't have to physically touch the material. Now another thing you have to be conscious about with this printer is that you can only print on these tanks a finite number of times because they have a silicone layer that's on the other side of the glass that allows the laser to penetrate and cure the material with the width of 140 microns. That is tiny. But because it's so highly focused, it will start to cloud up the tank. And once the tank gets completely clouded over, you're not going to be able to print anything else on it. Now, I've been told that this can be 60 to 100 prints, depending on the size of the print that you're doing. And the software will move it around to maximize the use of the tank. But it's just something to be conscious of. You will be replacing these tanks. Also, once you pour the material into this tank, consider the tank pretty much dedicated to that material after you do that. You can buy more material and keep using the tank until it's exhausted, but you're not gonna wanna swap the materials back and forth between the tanks. So make sure that for every cartridge that you get of material, 
that you actually get one of these tanks. Now, when handling the tanks, you definitely don't want to touch the glass on the bottom because your fingerprints and stuff like that can diffuse the laser and affect your print quality. So make sure that when you're storing and handling the tanks that you don't touch the bottom. And if you do, follow Form Labs cleaning instructions to get it all nice and shiny again before you attempt to print. Now, another cool thing is Form Labs just announced a whole new line of materials for this thing, ranging from stuff that can handle incredible temperatures up to an open flame, all the way down to stuff that you can actually use for molding and casting where it burns away as a gas and doesn't leave any ash behind. So like for lost wax casting and stuff like that, that would be amazing. Now, in addition to the entire material library that is available for this printer, you can also put it into an open mode where you can use other resins that aren't manufactured by Forms. But note that when you're using their materials, they have calibrated the machine to every one of the materials perfectly. I've yet to have a print on this thing that didn't come out flawlessly, except for the few times when I got the support material wrong. And we're gonna talk about that right now. Now the software package that you use to drive this printer is available on Mac and PC and it's called Preform. Now the Preform software is some of the most stable 3D printing software I've ever used. I've never had the application crash on me once and I've never had it just freeze up and stop responding, which is something that's pretty common with a lot of other slicers that I use on the FDM printers. It's also a very professional looking program and it has a lot of very simple features so it doesn't overwhelm you. The printer is doing most of the heavy lifting. So when you load the model, you can basically go in and tell it to auto generate supports and just print. That's the one button, just take what's on the screen and give it to me on the printer. But unfortunately, when I tried that with Kratosocles here, uh, he got a little cut off down here at the legs. And the reason being was the software kept missing a very small support that it needed on the little kneecap that's supposed to be on his leg here. But the nice thing is Form Labs answered my question immediately, came back and they even had me send them the model and they found the layer where the support wasn't being created and instructed me on how to add the support myself. And after I did that, I got a flawless print. And the process isn't difficult. You basically just go up and down through the layers to make sure that there aren't any floating pieces out in space. Now, in the event something like that happens, it's not a game over. You can open it, you can pause the print, you can open it up, you can take uh, their little included spatula and gently scrape along the bottom of the tank on the silicone layer and break that piece free and just take it out and discard it. And the worst case scenario is if you leave the printer unattended and the thing completely disconnects from the build surface and it's just printing all over the bottom of the tank when it's done, just take that piece out, throw it away, Way, and if there's a bunch of particulate that's that's in in the material just take it and strain it through a paint filter and they have full instructions on how to do that on their site because you don't want to waste this material because it is very very expensive now the printer can be connected wirelessly to your network which is my preferred method and the software just immediately detected the printer once it was on my network and could just send things to it to print right now there's a print on the screen waiting to go now I have to admit that the printer is incredibly easy to use. Their cartridge system, though expensive, is amazing. You literally just drop a cartridge in the back, you pop your tank out, put a cover on it, pop in your new tank, pop the cover off of it, and you're good to go, close the printer. And the nice thing is the printer knows which material's in it because the cartridges actually have a chip inside of them. So it knows how much material there is, how much material's left. It's not gonna let you print something if you don't have enough material. And it's always gonna keep adding material to the tank while you're printing. So you can do large prints without having to have a maintenance stop. Now, just a couple of days ago, I started this print right here. This is actually an Xbox One controller cover right here. It still has all the support material on it. We're gonna go ahead and take this off the printer and clean it up so I can show you how easy it is to remove the support material. Now when the printer arrives and you get the cleaning tanks, you also get this little thing that sits up on top of the cleaning tanks, which I keep in my bathroom upstairs. Um, and this is just a work surface that has a little lip on it so you don't get material all over everything. Now this is a cool tool that they include right here. This is actually a platform for holding this when it's out of the printer. So all you do is just flip up this top little piece here. You slide off the build platform right here after I've let it drain. You can see that as the controller right there, but I'm not having to touch anything yet. And then you just take this guy, slide it into the back like that, and now you have a nice firm way to hold onto this while you're trying to dislodge it. Now, when you're not using the printer, always close the lid because whenever the lid is open, you're exposing the resin to UV light, which will slowly start to cure it and reduce its lifetime. All right, so this is the tool that Form sends you. It's just got a little raised section on it so you can get it under the corner of the part. And they even made the software so that it prints it so there's a little lip to get under with the tool so you can twist it. That's all you do. Now again, the reason why you wanna wear gloves when handling this stuff is there's still residue. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, but there's absolutely a oily 
residue on the gloves. And like I said, if you get the stuff on your hands, you'll go take like three showers and it'll still be on you. So wear gloves, trust me. Now the next thing we do is submerge this in alcohol to get all of that extra residue off the surface. All right, so here we have the tanks. And when you open them up, one of the tanks, and they're completely sealed. You can have them inside. You're not gonna, your whole house isn't gonna smell like alcohol when these are closed because they're nice and sealed. But you have this little up and down basket right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take our controller here and submerge it into the alcohol. And then we're just gonna agitate it for about 30 seconds. Now you can see as the alcohol clears off the residue, it does make the surface finish a little bit cloudy, but if you just hit it with lacquer, uh, when it's all cured, it'll actually look like glass again. If you go out to Form Lab's website, you can actually see that they successfully printed optical lenses for a camera on this printer using this material. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and close it up after agitating, and we're gonna leave it for 10 minutes. All right, so most of the material should now be off the part. So I took my gloves off and just touching it. Yep, the alcohol did a good job. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lift it out and then we're just gonna go ahead and just give it a quick rinse over here in the clean tank. All right, so now that we're done with the alcohol bath, we need to finish curing it, which means we need a UV light source. Normally you just go outside and set it down, but since it's getting late here, I'm gonna go ahead and opt to use this. This is a UV curing lamp like you'd see in a nail salon. Now this one, you can actually remove the plate out of the bottom so that you can put it up like this and point it at something. Now I don't recommend pointing it at your face because it's not generally good for your eyes and you'll probably get a wicked tan. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put the controller in front of it like this. And we're just gonna go ahead and leave it here for about an hour. Okay, while we're waiting for that other part to clear, let's go ahead and uh, start taking the support material off Kratosocles here. Now he's fully cured, he's not sticky anymore, he's rock hard actually. Ladies. And the nice thing is the material is actually really easy to remove. The bulk of it you can just grab and just crush and break off the model. Now, once you get the bulk of the material uh, removed, you just use flush cuts. And these actually, they send these with them. You get like tweezers, you get flush cuts, you get a ton of tools actually with this thing. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get into the little areas like inside of the arms and we're just gonna cut off the support material. Now you wanna take your time and do a good job. Cause remember guys, this stuff, especially this where it's printed completely solid all the way through, uses up a fair amount of material. So this is a pretty expensive print, but it's still a lot cheaper to do it on the form at home than it is to have a company like Shapeways do it. Now be prepared, you are gonna make a mess cause as you're cutting these things, they will go flinging off and spalling around the room. So uh, have a vacuum handy. But the flush cuts do an amazing job of getting all of the little material off the surface. You don't have to do a lot of cleanup afterwards. All right, so that took me about a minute. Now, if you look really closely, you still can see some tiny little dots from where I cut the material off with the flesh cuts, but you can honestly take some high grit sandpaper or buffing compound and just rub those down if you wanna get it ready for like a mold. But the level of detail on this is amazing. You can actually see every single link in the chain wrapped around his front armor here and on his arm. You can see the scar on his stomach with each and every one of the stitches and all the detail in the flowing hair on the head, that's all stuff that would be very, very easily lost on an FDM style printer. And that's what honestly makes this printer really worth it. Now for an SLA printer, it has an amazing build volume. It's about 145 by 145 by 175 millimeters, which works out to about, I think it's about 5.7 by 5.7 by 6 point something. Um, which is really, really decent build volume. But again, FDM printers are better if you're printing really, really large things. Now that's not to say that you couldn't print a bunch of stuff on this and glue it all together and have like a remarkably detailed large object. And you can actually see my finger through it. Look at that, it's actually translucent. Whenever you print translucent material on FDM printers, it never looks like ice. You also don't get any noticeable layer striations. This was printed at 50 micron. Now just to give you an example, that's half the resolution this printer is capable of. You can actually print in this particular material down to 25 micron, but just keep in mind only the translucent material can print down to 25 micron. All the other materials um, can print at either 50 or 100 micron. All right, so now that the 3D print is fully cured, the, the surface actually doesn't have any kind of residue feel to it at all and it's a solid part. So now we just need to cut away the support material. Now, since this is a lot thinner than Kratosocles, I'm gonna go ahead and use the flush cuts to gently remove it so that I don't actually damage it and crack it. So here's the Xbox One controller next to it. And you can see if you lay it over the top, it looks like everything lines up pretty good. It looks like the size on this is correct. Now I took a little bit of a risk downloading this model, uh, which I'll also have linked in the video description, but it looks like whoever designed it did a pretty good job. Well guys, it's pretty obvious that I'm in love with the form too. The results, I mean, speak for themselves. It's an amazing printer. The software package is good. The build quality is amazing. You'll know what I'm talking about when you handle the printer. The on-screen OS and the menu and all that stuff just looks beautifully, beautifully polished. And you notice that I have it sitting up here and not in the garage. It's because honestly, 
I could not put something so beautiful out in the garage. I wanted this to be up here in the nerd cave so that I could look at it because I actually get inspired by looking at something like this with such a good industrial design. Now, I think the market that this printer would target the best is gonna be the professional guys that want to do rapid prototyping and create as close to a polished product within really tight tolerances as possible because it is very, very expensive for the cost of material and replacing the tanks and replacing uh, the other consumables as well as the alcohol that you need to clean the parts and stuff like that. But as far as the usability of the machine, I would say that this is actually one of the easier 3D printing experiences I've ever had as far as just plug and play. Put the thing in, pop the cartridge in and go. Now, one thing we didn't talk about a lot in this video was material durability. And I want you to go out to form lab and look at the different materials they offer because the material like this is more of a harder material that isn't super durable. It's like PLA. If you want something that's closer to an ABS material, they make that resin. It's a tough material and then they make everything in between, including some of the more exotic materials that they just announced recently. So guys, I hope you enjoyed my first initial review of the Form 2 SLA 3D printer. There are gonna be a lot more videos coming in the future of projects that I'm gonna use this on because it is just so good at what it does. I think personally it justifies the cost of material to be able to print something out that's that delicate and perfect in its detail that you could basically just cast this in silicone and start making replicas tomorrow. The problem I have with FDM is when you print, you you need support in areas that's very, very hard to clean. When you print across areas, you, you, you have bridging and drooping of the material. And there's a lot of problems that you have to tinker with over and over again to get it right. And then once you do get it right, there's a lot of cleanup and bondo and sanding to get it perfect. With this machine, you just basically push the button, print it, rip the support material off, and other than cleaning up just a couple little points, uh, if they bug you, this thing is ready to cast. I mean, it's just, it's it's awesome. Guys, just look at that. Look at that. That's Kratos, Kratosocles right there. The level of detail on that's crazy. Like, everybody that I've shown this to thought it was literally an action figure that I got from somewhere. They, they had absolutely no idea that this was 3D printed. And honestly, if you saw that, would you think it was 3D printed? Because most people are used to seeing the layer lines and stuff like that, and it's it's so it's, it's so perfect. Like, if you look closely, you see what appears to be scratches, like little tiny fine, fine scratches, but they're not. Those are, those are actually the layers. And again, this was printed at 50 micron, guys. This wasn't printed at 25 micron. So this is only half the resolution the printer's capable of. All right, guys, I let this review run long because I was just so excited, but I hope you guys enjoy the machine as much as I do. And I look forward to seeing your comments down below. And also, if you have any further questions, questions about this machine or any other videos that I've created, come on over to Twitter and tweet me. I am at Barnacles. Apparently I'm a real social guy. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself. <laughs>